Hey everybody, and welcome back to Everybody's Going to the Rapture. And I believe that this is the finale. This is the end of this unusual game. Oh, so interesting. So unusual. You know. Uh, I hope that there's another way to get to that tower up there. Um, you've gone through a lot of the key players in town. And you saw how they passed. Yep. So I'm going to go up to this tower and see what's going on. Oh. Like Kate was here and in her final moments, she was trying so hard to understand what was going. Whoa. Whoa. Is that a light butterfly? Where are you going? How can you fly through matter? Oh, it was a light butterfly. Oh. This is so crazy. She's doing all of these mathematic calculations. Just whoa. Whoa, did you rope off this area? That's insane. How is that just sitting in the air like that? And it's like twisting and pulsating. Oh no, it's just winking out of existence. Wow. That's crazy. But what was Kate trying to... She was looking over here at something. Trying to triangulate something. What did you see? What are you talking about? You have all these pictures and all these maps here. And you saw the light, too. Yeah. Like I've seen the light. Yeah. Okay, this is the third station. That the symbol for Valis? You know, you're wrong. That's a cool symbol. Alright, you had a generator and tons of books. I know it didn't mean to hurt any of them. I try and explain why Lizzie tried to leave with her child and why it was wrong to stop her. I try and explain that much of what it did was wrong. It shows me Stephen and Lizzie together. And I'm happy for them. Hmm. Frank walks his fields with Mary. Wendy and Edward nest together in the orchards of their love. Jeremy lies at peace with his God at last. All of them are happy because they are together. I understand it better now. It is a collector of time. No butterflies. A collector of time? Collector of butterflies. Huh. Okay. That's, a uh, That's unusual. But alright. And that was only at three. I still got two more before I reach the infamous Tower 6. I expect and I kind of hope that Tower 6 is just littered with all kinds of stuff in a final monologue from her. What? Are they just bouncing all over the place now? Oh, man. At this point, wow. Wow, so this is like the epicenter of it all. I hate to say like round zero, but this is very much like that. 
four, five, and six are further down the road. Okay. Let's see what you got. Wow. And this, see, I wish I had this leading, this guiding system for the rest of the game. Like, okay, this is where you really need to go. And it stayed lit until you, like, walk past it or something. Okay, so let's see what she did over here, because there are all kind of, like, how was she able to do this? She got all these pieces together and put antennas out here, closer to here, to try and get a signal, and I can't turn those on. Oh, excuse me. I got a heartburn. Wow. I come over and it just illuminates. Wow. So, if I had to guess, I would say that she tried to put all of these out here to get a stronger signal. And all those tethered back to amplify whatever she was trying to do or whatever she was trying to catch. I'd imagine she was trying to catch something here. That's a lot of heavy work for one person to do. That's incredible. Huh. Moving generators, fueling them, building all of this, tethering them back to where they need to go, making sure they had an adequate power source. All this with what we now consider primitive technology. I watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Stephen's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face. And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened. He did or angry. See I remember his expression. Just like I remember it from the first time, early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping, said, God, love I love you. you. Yep. And I loved him as he entered the fire. And I let him go, knowing I wasn't ready to join him. We have held time to ourselves here in this place held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. Oh, I gotta say, this music in this game is awesome, but I hate it because it's copywritten and I, every time I upload a video, I gotta uh, remove the song, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. It's just that it makes kind of like awkward gaps because the song is blocked in certain countries. I mean, okay. I guess if if that's the country and that's the nation and society's prerogative, sure, why not? We all live in with different cultural norms and stand whoa cultural norms and standards. But man, man, oh man, wow! So much light to show what she was doing perfectly illuminated is this tower six or is it five better be five okay it's five 
Alright. Wow. Okay, so what was she doing here? How did she do all of this? The power cords are the thing that have the TV fully suspended. TV is fully suspended from the trees. So, what was she trying to do here? Surrounding herself with everything. Oh, all right, let's hear from the doctor herself. It reaches out from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere. The bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. Is this the Mako stream? Is this a precursor to Final Fantasy 7? And Final Fantasy 15? And possibly Final Fantasy 13? Because if it is, Final Fantasy 7 will be the greatest franchise in history. Spanning multiple games and development companies and movies and. Oh. Try to escape? Not at all. The last tower six. Yes, indeed. Is there anything out here? Anything that I need to be aware of out here? That would get me an arbitrary trophy that means absolutely nothing? Six, the most imposing. Whoa. Oh, I can just walk out here. I didn't even know. Oh, so I can get a better view of the Aurora Borealis. This is nuts. What is this? I have no clue, but the backdrop of space is gorgeous. If only looking up from Earth, we could see space like that. For all the bright and contrasting colors of light uh, juxtaposed to the splotches of darkness and dark matter intermingled with the actual individual iridescence of the stars. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, that's enough of me waxing poetic. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And, I, oh man. Yep, it's time to accept fate. Time to walk in and see her final fate. Maybe, maybe she'll still be alive. I doubt it, but maybe. You never know, because I don't know who I am. Whoa. Yep, this is it. And 
I can't move. Sit back and enjoy the show. The end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone. And we will join them. We are born apart. Driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole. The imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. Wow. All right. Well, that was most certainly a unique game. Oh, hold on. Let me get that yawn out. Okay, that, that was most certainly a, a unique, individualistic experience. Take what you want from it, but my reaction, my thoughts. Interesting game. Very, very interesting game. Uh, I think I'll get the cons out of the way first so I can just dive into the pros. I didn't like the pacing of the character itself. You know, it forced you to take the game too slow. And you only had, I didn't like the fact that the character had only two speeds, slow and slower. And you were forced, and most likely you're just going to hear just a blank background because my, uh, my voice will be the only thing in here since this music is probably really copywritten. So that's fine. Um, but it, I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that it didn't have guides to help you until the very end. And the guides at the very end weren't needed because you as a player developed your own sense for where everything was and kind of where you needed to go. The guides only sort of came in and helped once you were, like, lost for a while or once uh, you had left an area and came back to where you last saw it. Then the little sparkly doodad would jump in and be like, oh, okay, follow me! Um, I don't like the fact that this game has arbitrary... Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'll just turn this music down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I don't like the fact that this game has uh, arbitrary trophies. Like, you got you got to look at every single Metro poster, and it doesn't give you an acknowledgement for anything as you go along. You can't go into certain houses. You can't go into certain places. You know... While very cool, um, I think that there was a lot of dead, unused space in the game. Uh, so, you know, that was one negative. Um, now, for the positive. I really liked the story that this game told. I really thought that the, the story that the game told, the ambience that the game placed you in, was really 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 good like it made you think and feel like you were alone the entire time and in the beginning some of the ambient noises scared me because i was like whoa i'm supposed to be alone am i supposed to see somebody it's going to be like survival horror type of thing and it wasn't it was literally you're alone walk around and figure it out 
um, which was really cool. I think that they did a really good job as far as that was concerned. I just had to put my headphones down, my broken headphones. Um, I liked, I really liked the visuals. Like, uh, the Chinese room did an outstanding job on the visuals in this game. It was a graphically beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous game. From start to finish, everything looked good. And that's what I'm really excited about, about the game. Like, the everything in it was so good, the sound, the visuals, that it was a real immersive uh, experience. I liked the characters. Everybody liked the voice actors. They had it on point. Nobody felt like they were phoning it in. It all felt real and authentic and genuine. I liked the perspective that you saw the story from, where... You were just a passive onlooker going back into this town and seeing, you know, what happened here, seeing how these people live their lives and the interaction. was very cool and the relationship development that they put in this game was awesome now you may view it out of order but your mind can sequentially piece everything together and once you do it's like it's so much richer than just black and white everybody died da, 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 da. there were so many shades of gray and so much going on uh in the final days because i would say it, this whole rapture thing took place from a week over the time period of three days to a week and to see everything that everyone was going through in that time and how all their relationships came together and drove each other apart very very cool i think all of the settings like the physical sections of town that you were in were incredibly appropriate uh the controls were simple you know, you just need the direction path. Pardon me if you hear something outside. It's the people doing uh, landscaping on a day that they don't normally do it. Um, but you see uh, all the different parts of towns that make absolute sense. Uh, the weather changed. The time of day changed. Um, I like how they left things a mystery. Uh, and really like kind of like left it sort of open and you don't know what that thing was but you do understand that it was a force that was it's, it's it was killing people and quote unquote freeing people all at the same time it was an energy being that had come into contact with humans and was kind of like elevating human consciousness to another level through death so they transcended their mortal coral. Now, I don't know if this went around the rest of the world. According to Steven, it did. But, oh, jeez, man. Really? Really? So inappropriate. Uh, according to Steven, it did. And, you know, he was really, like, distraught over everything. And he killed a guy with a hammer at the end of it. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And I'm glad, I'm glad that I had this experience. This was a really, really good um, uh, just, to, and it was one con that, that I forgot in the beginning, which ties into what I'm saying now. It's, I don't like how the game managed my emotions. And what I mean by that is usually when you play a video game, you're emotionally, God, man, you're emotionally there for the entire experience. Like the game latches on or the movie latches on and it leads you in ups and downs but it never really like lets go and the problem with this game is especially if you're going after the trophies is there are times where there's music and it's very emotional and events are happening and you're seeing things unfold in front of you and then in the period between seeing that event and the next event there's just this dead period where you have to walk very slowly to your next destination. If you're looking for other items like radios and telephones, there's this dead period. And then there's this kind of like 
the quote unquote dead silence, but it's not dead. It's full of ambient stuff like bird noises and water and stuff like that, and trees, leaves rustling. But that dead period can really take a gamer out of the experience. Unless the dead oh holy crap. That was a message at the end. And I don't know what that message said. The end. You have earned a trophy. Oh, hooray. I've made it to the end of the game. Should not be proud of myself. But um, those dead periods for someone who's trying to do a completionist run of the game can really take you out of the experience and, and make it kind of feel tedious. So, uh, unfortunately, that was there. But otherwise, I would say it's a game that I feel like I, um, I, I didn't feel like I needed to get it on day one still don't but okay there we go but it's a game that I'm uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity it's an experience that I'm glad I had the opportunity to have and uh, to everybody who hears my voice I know I'm super late but if you haven't played this game go ahead and play it I've left out plenty you saw I didn't get all the trophies I think I only got like three and one of them you got just because you completed the game. But there's still plenty more to see. There are plenty more telephone things to get. There are plenty more radio things to get. You know, just go out there and see all the nooks and crannies that this game has to offer. Because there's much more story that we didn't get the opportunity to see and or hear. That I think that would add to, you know, the substance of the story. So... Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for making it all the way to the finale. If you liked it, mash that like button, like this no tomorrow, share the video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter and hit me up in the comments section below. Let me know what you think about the videos thus far. And I have more videos coming on the way. There should be another series. There should be another series lined up. I gotta check my notes and see which one I'm gonna bounce to next. But I am the outlier and I will see you all in the next video.